Hello and welcome, it's Misha Amy, the Crafty Kyluk, and today I'm going to be talking about Florence Newton, the witch of y'all. If you're new to my channel, Falter, welcome. I am Amy and I make content about Irish history, folklore, food and magic. Given the content of today's topic, this video will include discussion of witchcraft trials, religious specifically Christian religious stuff and also misogyny in the way of persecution of witches and women and also discussion of patriarchal society of the time as well as mention of death, specifically death by hanging. Today I'm going to be talking about a witch or an alleged accused witch from the 17th century in Yall, County Cork, and her name was Florence Newton. So just a little bit of a background about witchcraft in Ireland and witchcraft accusations specifically. According to Andrew Snedden, who is a historian and specifically looks at witchcraft and witchcraft practices in Ireland, Snedden says that accusations of witchcraft in Ireland were predominantly in Presbyterian communities, and particularly settled communities in Ulster mostly. But in general there was a reluctance in the 16th and 17th centuries, so the 1500s and 1600s, to prosecute, um, try and convict women of witchcraft. Usually these types of accusations or suspicions of witchcraft being practiced would have been dealt with within the church and church courts specifically, so there wouldn't have been an escalation to the usual state judicial systems. While there isn't a lot of historical evidence to give us a full understanding and full context as to why witchcraft wasn't really persecuted, one of the reasons that's given for particularly in Gaelic Irish communities and Irish speaking communities of why witchcraft wouldn't have been persecuted or wouldn't have been seen as satanic was that it was part of the culture. So witches didn't specifically target humans, they would have targeted dairy produce and things of that nature. So there's a lot more magic and cursing to do with dairy produce, maybe cattle and other farm animals and the stealing of butter and milk than there would be directly harming other people. And also given that it was part of the culture where people would use magic to counteract witchcraft. So magic wasn't seen as this satanic demonic thing. Snedden specifically refers to the Gaelic Irish folklore around witches specifically to do around Bealtaine or May Day and the stealing of butter and also the shape-shifting into hares and other similar animals. And as I said, there wasn't really a stigma around using magic to fight magic. It was very much done, it was very much practiced, it very much still is. And also the clergy, or the Catholic clergy, wouldn't have been new to using magic themselves, and there's various accounts of even priests using curses. Witchcraft trials and accusations, therefore, were much more seen in the Presbyterian community and Church of Ireland and would have probably been influenced by the European witchcraft trials rather than Ireland having its own witchcraft trials. That's not to say that Ireland didn't have witchcraft trials, we just didn't have as many of them and they weren't as big of a thing as they were in other countries. So Florence Newton, one night in Yall, was going to the house of a former bailiff and future mayor, one John Pine. And on this late December evening in 1660, knocked on the door to ask for some food. The servant that answered the door was called Mary Longdon, and Mary, upon being asked for beef from Florence, refused. This led Florence to go away very angrily and kind of giving out under her breath. I'm wondering if this is where the term having beef with someone came from, though Florence didn't have the beef, so maybe not. Anyway, one week later, Florence and Mary bumped into each other again in Yall. Mary was carrying a bucket of water on her head and Florence went up to her, hit the bucket off her head, spilling the water, and according to Mary, violently kissed her. According to Mary's testimony, Florence said, Mary, I pray thee, let thee and I be friends, for I bear thee no ill will, and I pray thee, do thou bear me none. This is 17th century speak, so it's all ye thou wilt 
etc. So in Florence's statement of I hope you don't have any ill will towards me because I certainly don't have any towards you, Mary took that as a threat. Maybe had something to do with the violent kissing. A brief interlude for tea and a smooch. So a few days after this has happened, Mary reports that the ghostly spectre figures of both Florence and Satan appear to her in her house, specifically asking for Mary to join their ranks. And then apparently within a month of this stolen kiss, Mary had begun to display symptoms that would have commonly been interpreted as demonic possession. According to Snedden, this would have included supernatural strength, aversion to the Bible, being unable to say prayers, and also things like having fits, going into trances, and having stones or rocks randomly and seemingly without any origin thrown at her, as well as vomiting random household objects such as pins and needles and wool. After Florence was accused, she was put through various different trials that would have been there to test if someone was a witch, such as being observed to see if familiars came and creatures came to be with them and being asked to say the Lord's Prayer. While she was imprisoned and waiting for trial, she was continually put through these tests. Some of the testimony from the guards states that several creatures, including cats and other creatures, came to her and that she had several familiars. One of her jailers and guards was called David Jones and he was apparently the second victim of Florence's witchcraft. In testimony from Anton's papers, which is the main manuscript from the court proceedings, it's said that David Jones was asking Florence to say the Lord's Prayer and she got him to come close to the grate of her cell. And in an interaction where she was attempting to say the Lord's Prayer, she asked him if she might kiss his hand and he put his hand through the grate and she kissed it. He was then convinced that she had bewitched him and he died about a fortnight later. During his wife Eleanor's testimony during Florence's trial, she describes a conversation after David Jones came home that evening. She says that Jones stated that ever since she kissed my hand, I have had great pain in that arm and I very verily believe she hath bewitched me. Furthermore, Eleanor goes on to say that in the days and week after this, he continuously from that time, he was restless and ill, complaining exceedingly of a great pain in his arm for seven days together and all seven days. And he grievously afflicted and crying out against Florence Newton and about 14 days after he died. Now, we're not sure and it doesn't state anywhere that I've read what hand Florence kissed. That's not specified as far as I can see in any of the research or in any of the transcriptions from the trial. However, in Eleanor's description of the pain traveling up his arm and into his heart before he died, that would suggest to me potentially a heart attack, though I am not a trained medical professional. But if it was a heart attack, could it possibly have been from the audacity of a woman being so forward as to kiss a man of her own volition in the 17th century? We'll probably never know, but from what I was reading and given the type of patriarchal gender norms at the time, and also given that, as is widely discussed when talking about witchcraft in history, that women accused of rich, wit women accused of rich, women accused of witchcraft were generally displaying some type of socially unacceptable behavior in a patriarchal male dominated society. Dr. Mary McAuliffe in relation to Florence Newton's trial has specifically talked about the overtly sexual nature of kissing and thus that would have been very inappropriate in 17th century Ireland. But all we can really do is speculate on why David Jones would have passed away in that manner. Florence Newton's trial was on the 1st of September 1661. She was accused of two charges, the first being the bewitchment of Goody Mary Longdon, which would have carried a maximum sentence of one year's imprisonment. The second 
crime that she was convicted of was the killing of David Jones, her jailer, by way of witchcraft. And that was a capital crime, which the punishment for was death by hanging. The majority of witness testimonies that are available in the Anton manuscript details the bewitchment of Mary Longdon. However, that manuscript has only been available to historians in the last few years. Historians who had studied this case prior to this manuscript being available had a lot of speculation about the outcome of the trial. And that was because they were reliant on a source by a man called Glanville who had transcribed a lot of the detail from the trial, but he had missed specific parts specific important parts such as the verdict and not having the verdict for a trial is just a tad inconvenient to historians and in general to know what went on. So historians prior to the Anton papers being available had speculated that given the capital offences that she was accused of Florence had been put to death. However there was and is a lack of evidence about a hanging from this witchcraft trial and that would have more than likely been in some other publication such as a newspaper from the time and it's not. In looking at the Anton papers Andrew Sneddon was able to identify an omission from Glanville's paper and transcription which gives an indication of what may have happened to Florence Newton. So in the Anton manuscript it states that Florence was a yawl spinster and 65 years of age or thereabouts and also that she died during the trial on the 11th of September 1661 which was 10 days after the trial began. So given the age of Florence and also the stress of being put on trial it's highly likely that she died throughout the judicial process rather than as a result of a conviction or a death sentence. After she was accused of the two crimes being the bewitching of Mary and also the death of David Jones, other male elders and elites in Yall started to link Florence's witchcraft with other illnesses and ailments that had been happening people in the town. Also during the trial in the Anton papers it's noted that Florence continued to use witchcraft. So while Mary Longdon was on the stand giving her evidence she was asked if prior to her interaction with Florence had she ever had fits or gone into trance before and she stated she hadn't but because with that kiss she bewitched her because she had heard from Nicholas Pine and others that said Florence had confessed as much. This Mary Longdon having closed up her evidence Florence peeped at her as it were betwixt the heads of the bystanders and that interposed betwixt her and the said Mary and lifted lifting up both her hands together as they were mangled or tied together, cast them in an angry and violent motion towards the said Mary as if she intended to strike at her if she would have reached her and said, now she is down. Upon which the maid, Mary, fell suddenly down to the ground like a stone and fell into the most violent fit that all people could come to lay hands on her could scarce hold her. In the margin at the bottom of this page, Sneddon notes that this action was witnessed by Aston, who wrote the paper. Further in the Aston papers, it also states that the court having taken notice that the maid had said she'd been very well when the said Florence was in bolts and ill again went out of them till they were again put on her, demanded of the jailer that if she was in bolts or no, to which she said she was not, but only mankled. Upon which the order was given to put her in bolts and upon putting them on, she cried out, she was killed, she was undone, she was spoiled why do you torment me thus and so continued complaining grievously for her half a quarter of an hour and then came in a messenger from the maid and informed the court the maid was well so not only was Florence during the trial casting Mary down after giving her evidence she's also recorded as when out of bolts able to have this adverse effect on Mary's health and then when she's in bolts it seems to contain her power and reduce the effect that it was having on Mary. From the accounts that I've read about this it really seems like Mary was playing up what was happening rather than actually having an adverse effect caused by witchcraft but again that's something we will never know for certain. In talking about the kiss and the kisses I suppose because Florence was 
was accused of a lot of kissing. As stated by Florence via Mary's testimony, it was for reconciliation purposes rather than for cursing. But even if it wasn't meant in aggression, and that's not how we're reading it now, the social meaning of kissing would maybe have been a lot different than they are today. And it might have been influenced by kissing biblically. And I don't mean in the biblical sense, I mean kisses in the Bible, such as the kiss of Judas on Jesus, which isn't really a friendly, well-meant kiss. So that would have been a precedent that maybe was in the minds of people, considering they were all very godly and very holy and all the rest of it. It's also suggested in Sneddon's paper that the kissing may have been a way to further antagonize Mary and David Jones, but without full evidence and full accounts and really being able to be there to witness it and being able to see into the mind of Florence Newton, we never will really know. Another point that's brought up by Sneddon is the sectarian tensions that would have been around at the time, because we're talking about a time that would have been post-Reformation, where there would have been tension between Catholics and the Church of Ireland, and the Church of Ireland very much trying to re-establish itself post-Reformation. But Sneddon does state that it's really difficult to be able to say for certain what role this would have had in how this entire scenario played out. So more evidence really is needed on what kind of role that might have played in the Florence Newton saga. But that is pretty much it. I will post some articles in the description below so you can read Andrew Sneddon's paper yourself and see a lot more of the transcripts from the Aston papers. I'd really like to know your thoughts on this. Have you heard of Florence Newton before? Do you think that the kisses were meant in good faith or bad faith? And what was the role played by the patriarchal society that was there at the time and how women were treated that maybe went outside the social norms. I will continue to explore those questions in more videos that are coming later on my channel. Are there any Irish witches that you would like me to look into specifically? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps boost the video and help support the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications as well so you know when new content is coming out. I'm uploading about twice a week at the moment. I'm also going to try and do some shorter snippet videos. So let me know what you would like to see more of. If you would like to support the channel in a monetary way, you can buy me a coffee on ko-fi.com. The link will be in the description below. But for now, Sinead, that is it for me. So, slong a fall, I will see you soon.